We are focusing on module three this week, where we're trying to integrate our induction skills, put them all together. So we're not just practicing them at night or right before dreams, uh, but also even uh, idle points during the day or uh, specific opportunities during the day. This is an ongoing practice. And I, th I think that's why I, I, it's important to look at this as a, a type of yoga, because it's, it's not something that you just do when you're on the meditation cushion or on your mat or in your bed, for example. It's, it's throughout the day. Our waking realities and our dreaming realities, they have a lot more in common than people tend to think. And so you have to be thinking about lucidity even during the daytime, not just right before sleep. So you will notice that uh, we have uh, daytime, what we're calling daytime mild skills. And last week we were focusing more on, well, how do you apply mild during the night, right? And so that might look like it lights out, you pick a dream to work with. Uh, if you wake up from a dream, after that dream, then you practice revisualizing yourself lucid, go back to sleep. Uh, and then also uh, doing it at the end of the night, in the morning after you record your dreams. But we also want to intersperse this practice into the daytime. So here's our 24 hour practice cycles. All on the left side, we have the end of night, uh, the middle by the moon, that's lights out. And then on the right side, end of night again, that's the next morning. So we're gonna be focusing on daytime mild. So what are we actually doing in the day to prepare us for our dream states? And how do we uh, rehearse? changing our, our thinking um, in the day so that can generalize in, into the night. And this is, you know, just a visual here. It doesn't have to be exact, but does reflect practicing this maybe five times a day or more, even if it was just once a day, but it was at the exact right time, such as when you notice something odd in your waking reality, that can go a really long way. So uh, we're going to be focusing on that. And just know that this can be practiced in a variety of different forms, but the protocol that I'm giving, we think is optimized as best as possible for lucidity. And um, we integrate this in the daytime with the rereading test because we can look for dream signs in the day, but there really aren't that many. You know, this clearly, for example, right now, looks like my waking life. I have autobiographical memory. I know what date it is. I know how I got here. Um, and so uh, I believe I'm awake, but I believe I'm awake in my dreams too. So how do I take that further and deconstruct that belief? Because it very well may be possible that I am dreaming this. And so integrating that rereading test can be really helpful and also integrating it with mild or the three R's practice is useful. So I'm gonna show you all something that I think can really illuminate the steps that we're supposed to be doing here. And, uh, Optimal times to apply this in the day are what I've called waking dream signs before, but I don't want to call it that anymore. Stephen and I used to call the, these time points waking dream signs, um, just because we didn't really have a better term for it, but I, I don't think this is a good thing to do. This is referring to when you're going about your daily business and you come across something dreamlike or something unusual or or surprising or, or different than you expected. But we don't want to call it a waking dream sign because then what you'll find is like, like what I found is uh, I'll be in a dream and then I'll go, oh, a waking dream sign. And I won't think it's a real dream sign. I just kind of move past it and like conclude I'm awake. So uh, a better term for that is potential dream signs. So could this be a potential dream sign? And there's actually a, a protocol that you can apply with this. Uh, so. Uh, you'll see in the module, you know, the steps are around noticing dreamlike experiences during the daytime. And if you notice something dreamlike, of course, ask yourself if you're dreaming, but then look around to and notice, is there any other clear indication that I could be dreaming right now? For example, something impossible. Because if something impossible is going on or just something that's so surely a dream, then that's it. You're lucid. It's not waking reality at that point. Uh, and you're preparing for this in, in the day, so you could do this at night. Of course, if you're, it is the day and you are awake, there aren't gonna be any clear indicators that you're dreaming. There might be some stuff that's dreamlike, but maybe probable or possible in waking life too. So uh, if that's the case, then you use that fail-safe, the rereading test, 
to just confirm, yes, I am indeed awake. And you don't stop there. You take it a step further and you still practice the three R's. So even though you conclude you're awake, you think, well, what would it be like if this were a dream right now? What kind of dream signs would be present? And what is my goal? What would I do in this moment if I were lucid? So you're preparing your mind uh, for that moment. So uh, this gets a little uh, uh, tough for some people, uh, confusing, I would say. Um, for me, it's, it's very intuitive, but then again, I've been doing this for many years and I've been pressed before by other people to explain, what are you talking about? What do you really mean here? What am I supposed to be doing? When do I do a reading test and when do I not? Uh, and, you know, I, I've come to realize that some people are very analytical in nature or have different learning styles. And also even people that feel like they get this or are very intuitive, it is good to still break down what we actually are doing. Now, this, I was very, originally, I was very hesitant to introduce this to my class because it looks super complicated. This is a decision tree. Um, do I do a reality test or not? How do I know if I'm dreaming? Uh, but it actually can be helpful. So let's go through it and uh, happy to answer any questions about this if it doesn't make sense or uh, we'll go from there. So first step when you're practicing mild in the day is you want to notice, are there any dream signs around me? And, uh, maybe something prompts you actually, you know, maybe your phone isn't working very well. Or maybe you get a call from someone you haven't really heard from in years. So there we are, there's a, a dream sign, right? Now, if there's no dream sign, the next step is, well, you can conduct a rereading state test. Uh, so just confirm, you know, am I awake or not? Uh, so did the text change? If it changes, then of course you're lucid, right? You don't need to go any further and you can explore the dream state because if it's printed text, it's likely not going to change in waking life. But if it doesn't change, then you do that next step. You reread it this time while visualizing when you look back at it, that it did change. And then uh, just assess if it changes. And if not, you conclude your wake and you apply the three R's. So rescript, rehearse, remind, even just for a moment. Uh, but if it changes again, hey, this wasn't waking reality in the first place, you're dreaming. So now you're lucid and you can explore. But how we're gonna be applying this is when uh, ideally we encounter something odd or unusual or, or dreamlike in our waking life. So if that's present, the next step is to ask, well, what type of dream sign is this? Is it something like it's totally impossible in waking life? And if that's the case, if it's impossible in waking reality, then you know you're dreaming, right? No need to do a rereading state test at this point. Don't let that interfere with your lucidity. Trust your lucidity and go with that. Skip the state test uh, and just be lucid at that point. Uh, but let's say it's the type of dream sign, and you will encounter these if you're practicing in the day, that is possible uh, to happen in waking life as well as dreams. Um, and it could be probable in dreams or in, in waking reality. Uh, odd things happen all the time, right? So let's say that was the case. So if you are prompted by something unusual, let's say your phone is acting strange or it's kind of broken, technology doesn't work in dreams a lot. At that point, look for other dream signs. Is anything else around you a clear indicator that you're dreaming? Go through the different categories of dream sign. Is there anything strange about uh, my inner awareness or form or actions or am I in a context that I'm not usually in in my waking life? And if you get a clear indication you're dreaming, then you don't need to do a reading state test either. Just be lucid, skip the state test. Don't let that confuse you. A lot of those aren't reliable. Or even if you're doing a rereading state test, that can trip you up sometimes. Like I'll sometimes do a rereading state test, and state test, and when I can't read it again, I'll I'll reason, oh, I forgot to put my contacts in, and then I move on and I forget about it. I get distracted, right? So what I'm trying to tell you all is that state tests can interfere with lucidity. If you're already questioning reality, you don't want to hinge your lucidity on those, uh, but you can use it as a failsafe. So for example. Let's say there weren't any other clear indicators you're dreaming, or maybe you're not sure. Like, for example, you think you're dreaming, but you want to jump off this cliff. Well, then maybe it's a good idea to conduct a rereading state test at that point anyway. Uh, so at that point, you go through the rereading state test uh, again. 
So I hope that wasn't too complex. I'm curious if anyone has any thoughts or comments about this uh, before we keep going. All right, let's keep going. Uh, there was an issue related to what Eric said. What if there isn't a dream sign that triggers lucidity? I hear this all the time. I just knew, or suddenly I just remembered, and that is a way to get lucid, but I want you to think about this a little bit more, and this is a cognitive science model of our thinking and dreams and what contributes to lucidity. Uh, so ABC model, it's kind of a fancy way of uh, talking about, you know, how our thinking uh, gets to the point where we become lucid. So antecedent would be the dream sign. Our belief, whether it's implicit or explicit, would be what did we think about that dream sign? And some of our thinking might be automatic in words, it goes through our mind, but other parts of our thinking might be uh, unconscious. They might be underlying beliefs uh, so, or, or more implicit. But we can try to put those into words here if, if we can. And then the consequence, what happened? What was the effect? Did you get lucid or not, right? So usually the case with dream signs is, for example, you notice a house where there isn't usually one across the street. Oh, you might have the cognition that, oh, I must have got new neighbors or the old neighbors moved out. And so that in that case, you might not get lucid. Or the example where your car is running out of gas. You might be thinking, I have to make it to the gas station or I'm going to be late to work. And then you wouldn't become lucid. But with a little bit of dream sign training, the car might be running out of gas, but you might think, that's not like me, or I just filled my tank the other day and I haven't driven anywhere. Ah, I must be having that dream again. And so that would lead to lucidity. But this bottom row is kind of like what I said. You know, I, you know, I just sort of remembered, it just sort of popped up. There was no dream sign. I just knew I was dreaming. I became lucid that way. And again, that, that can happen. But the other thing to consider is, um, whether you connect a dream sign cue with lucidity or not, there were still dream signs present in the dream because you were dreaming. So it was probably a host of dream signs. So there may have been some uh, implicit awareness or beliefs about your state that helped you spontaneously remember that you were dreaming. Uh, so it, it might not have been a specific cue that you connected, but our dreams, our environments, our brains are always processing things that are going on around us. So because you were dreaming, it's very likely that some memory priming was going on. So you're noticing all this dream-like stuff, even if it's not explicit noticing, and that very well may prime the mind to become lucid. So like I said, this is a way to become lucid, but I can't say this is depending on just spontaneously remembering your dreaming, it might help you get lucid more often, but probably not to the degree if you combine, combine that with dream sign training and actually walking through the sequence of steps in your cognition that would lead to more lucidity, drawing more associations uh, that you can intend uh, to carry out when, when you're dreaming. So uh, don't just rely on you know spontaneously getting lucid without having any awareness of dream sign. Add to it and and do your dream sign training. That'll probably help you get lucid more often or, or even possibly more highly lucid depending on how you're doing your rescripting. So I hope that makes sense. So this was a great participant question. It was basically, how can I practice mild in the day while awake if I never notice anything odd or dreamlike? So she was looking at this model of cognition and so she usually just accepts situations as they are. She doesn't really think about them as she goes along participating in her day. So what should she do? In other words, how can you apply mild to strengthen memory associations between dreamlike situations with being critical about whether you are dreaming? Well, I think a big part of that comes from mild, right? And so taking your dreams where you didn't notice stuff and then rescripting it so you do notice and you pause and you slow down and you ask, would this be a dream? But I think uh, more like in vivo practice is the daytime mild because odd things, dreamlike things do happen in waking reality. So use those times to practice taking pause, noticing what's going on around you, and, and doing uh, 
uh, that critical reflection. Does that kind of make sense and, and how to kind of train that? And, and if you're, you know, the other thing I noticed, there's personality types or just people that, you know, they have really busy lives, really busy schedules. They don't have time to really slow down and smell the flowers or smell the roses, right? They're, they're constantly on the go. It's go, 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 do, do, do all the time. But this is where some of those mindfulness practices can help in getting you to slow down and be more attuned and attentive to the here and now. Okay, so in that vein, let's do a semi-structured exercise here. And this is what I want y'all focusing on this week. And you know, if you have a great example, would love to see it in the forum as well. And maybe we'll get an opportunity to check in about what you noticed uh, next week. But uh, we're gonna be focusing on daytime mild. And ideally you're doing it at an opportune moment, moment or you notice something dreamlike could be something odd or unusual, or it could be, for example, you just thought about dreaming or lucid dreaming. Uh, very often when we're close to lucidity or we're sub-lucid, we just have a thought about dreams. So take that further and do the rereading state test, do the three R's. Um, and so, you know, it doesn't have to be something just weird happening in, in your life, right? But wanted to uh, solicit from all of you some examples of what this could look like. Uh, so cues, events, things that happen in your waking life that might serve as a good time to practice daytime mild or this reality testing protocol. So what could be a potential dream sign that you've encountered in your waking life? And I actually was thinking about this recently and took a picture of the moon recently by my house. So uh, the last full moon, we had a beautiful ring around it. And on occasion, I've had some dreams where the moon was doing some funny things or things that don't happen all that often or something I see only once in a great while, right? So that was that opportunity for me to do this practice. Uh, another um, example, when I go on walks, I like to do that uh, walking meditation or you could do mindful noticing and describing. Otherwise, you're just kind of like thinking about random stuff stuff and you know it's, at least you're getting some exercise but really like to combine it with mindfulness and the other day I was just walking down the street here in southern California and uh, I noticed across the street I'm gonna zoom in that there are all these cacti blooming I never noticed those before where did those come from did they just sprout up and so that was a perfect opportunity for me to practice this uh, because that is very common, oh, commonly a line of thinking in my dreams where I go, oh, that's different than usual, or I remember that being that way, or that was different last time I remember. And so those are those types of cognitions, a great opportunity to practice that daytime mild sequence like we were talking about. So I wanted to uh, get some examples from some of you, um, could be some you've noticed recently or in the past, or maybe that you might predict you could experience.